just quick testimony so you know, because I love testimonies and who, who I am and who we are together. Um, so I used to be traveling with, well, 35 years ago, traveling with a lot of well-known country western artists. Do you guys know country and western? Country and western. Why well, I suppose they had to do both? Couldn't they just say country or western? Country and western artists. Um, I was saved from being famous, and I was also saved from an airplane crash by the voice of God, Reba McIntyre's airplane. If, I don't know if you remember, I was in her band, and I had quit one month before, and the plane crashed, and all of my friends perished very quickly, and so that's when I went... I must have, she called me and she said, you, the Lord must have a mighty plan for you. And I said, and I'm mighty going after it. And I have changed the world a few times and plan on doing that a few times more. Are you with me? Come on. <laughs> Anybody can do it. With the power of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> then I came here. And that's when I had a massive encounter. And that would be, how many years? So <laughs> many years ago. Forty <laughs> years ago. Thirty-ish, I think. Massive encounter here with the Holy Spirit, and I had the honor of mentoring and encouraging many of our beloved worship leaders throughout all these years. Um, still doing that. Uh, actually, a lot of unexpected, wonderful things. Teenagers are knocking at our door now, so we're having young worship teams to our house almost every weekend. So we. For, we're building a barn now to accommodate that. And my husband has a heart for uh, food. <laughs> a heart for food. <laughs> and so someone offered to build him his dream feasting table, which will seat 40. He's so excited. So we're building a worship barn and a feasting table for all these young worshipers to come and meet God. Um, so I met and married my husband here 20 years ago. He was a Shiite Muslim who encountered the person of Jesus on the island of Cyprus. <laughs> I know, is this nuts? And then he ended up at Morningstar and I said, well, just marry that guy because he's really good looking and he's very tall. And that happened really fast because Rick said, y'all are too old to wait around, let's just get you married. So, <laughs> so Rick married us in Don Potter's Worship Center, and it was so cool. And then Rick and Morningstar had a big party for us and sent us out as missionaries, and that's what I'm here to talk to you about today. Worship wins souls. And guess what? It's easy. Like Gary said, the burden is light and the yoke is... Exactly. First, though, I was thinking about Chris coming in to Morningstar, and so exciting, and I have suddenly saw this vision. Can I just tell? So I saw this vision for you. I hope this is not inappropriate. No, because you, you give words, like mighty words. The mighty word giver. Okay, I mean, really, we highly value you, and we don't just like you for your gift but we really love you, we think you're amazing. So I saw you and then I saw, I was like, <laughs> I was like, oh, I just quickly went into this vision and I saw you rising up with, the, with two handfuls of helium balloons, you know how you, so I saw you rising and then you went up and up and then those balloons started popping, then you were in a hot air balloon because you had to get up higher. Then it kept going up and up and then that wasn't hot, that didn't work because you kept going higher. Then you ended up in a jet. Well, then that didn't work. So then you ended up in a rocket. Well, then that went to take you to all the places, even cultivating worlds, you know, like Ma I saw Mars and I know where he's probably not, he might go to Mars, I don't know. I mean that, there is some people going, but anyway. And I just feel like the Lord is saying, you know, he's taking you fast now into places that aren't cultivated yet to hear him and get close to him. Because, you know, when you love God and you hear God, you, when you learn to hear him, it does bring intimacy. And I've heard Chris many times say, I'm doing, I do this for the people. 
And I love that. I, we love each other. We are the body of Christ. And we're here to encourage each other. And that's what the gift of prophecy really is. It's to encourage and build each other up. And I want to do it to each other all the time and then to humanity. And that's what I do. I learned all of that here. I've, been, I've had the best teachers here. And so now I just bless you with that, Chris. And thank you so much for, for, for listening to God and coming here. And then I have a scripture about that, which I want for every, which I'm going to say for everyone. According to 1 Corinthians 14, 25, when someone's secrets are revealed, they will fall face down and worship God, proclaiming God is truly among you. So you can learn about the gift of prophecy in, in Corinthians. You guys know. Study. Okay. So worship is our life. We have a lifestyle of worship, and from that flow, we have musical worship, right? So worship is who we are, all of us. And from that lifestyle, we have musical worship. It should be all one. You're not two different people. You're one person, and you're full of worship, and you don't change. You stay who you are in worship. So he, he inhabits the praises of his people. And the way I see it, humanity loves music. So <laughs> if I'm a creative worshiper and I'm living for God, I'm a healer. And music is a gorgeous vehicle for which I can share his love and, and his power and draw in the people. So that's, that's what I do everywhere I go. Um, I want to be a light. Um, here's the definition. I'm giving you some quick stuff about worship before I give you testimonies, okay? Um, so John 4, 23 through 24 is one of my favorite scriptures where it says, God is spirit and he is looking for those who will worship him in spirit and in truth. And I do study that almost every year, just again, over again. And I made up this little phrase from the definitions, and it goes like this. My personal translation is, God is looking for obedient worshipers who will follow his breath with transparency and vulnerability. Obedient sons and daughters. So he's looking for worshipers who will worship him in spirit. That's his breath in us and truth. That's vulnerability. Okay, so that's what we're doing. Okay, so with that being said, we're going to go to two scriptures. I'm sorry, I didn't do PowerPoint. Forgot. Um, two scriptures. You can write it down if you want. Ephesians 5, 18 through 19, and Colossians 3, 16. These are both amplified. So these are two uh, pretty much the same scriptures, which I love that when God wants it really... It's, if it's twice in the Bible, I believe it's, it's big in God's heart. So be filled with the Holy Spirit and constantly guided by him. Speak to one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, offering praise by singing and making melody with your heart to the Lord. And then the other one, Colossians 3.16, let the spoken word of Christ have its home within you, dwelling in your heart and mind, permeating every aspect of your being as you teach spiritual things and admonish and train one another with all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts. Okay? So we have so many psalms and hymns, and I, I just heard this new, new point from Kalani last week. We were teaching together. And um, so we have the psalms and hymns down, and we, as corporate worshipers, we have some of the best songs that were written in America. We all know that. We lead the way in this, which is amazing. And we have the hymns and the psalms and we're, that are coming from our favorite leaders, and we're singing them in our churches, and they're fabulous. And, but this is a thing. It's a great blessing to lead the way in that, but that, the way Kalani said it last week, that's two-thirds of that scripture. The other third is spiritual songs. And that's a lot of the things that we do here and we teach here. It's a, a spiritual song is a God-breathed song. 
So that's one third of that scripture, right? Okay, so prophetic songs, new songs, song of the Lord, all that goes under spiritual songs. Some of a, a prophetic song can be new or old. I'm saying all this to say this is what I do when I travel, and this is what leads people really to the heart of God. So I sing a lot of the songs that we love, but I do it as a springboard to get to what the Holy Spirit wants to say in the moment so that people will come into the fresh, fresh presence of God and find salvation and the love that they've been looking for all their lives. So it's almost becoming a lost art. So if you're here this weekend, you're going to learn how to sing in the Spirit, find that Spirit flow really as best you can. You don't have to be perfect. There's only one perfect man in the whole world. His name is Jesus. We just follow him as best we can and we learn and we grow all along the way. So we're all missionaries. Okay, so uh, we, we're all missionaries. We're all worshipers. So we should be shining everywhere we go. People should be saying, well, what's on your face? What kind of makeup are you wearing? Why are your eyes so happy? What's wrong with you <laughs> that you're happy? <laughs> My husband was a Shiite Muslim, and he went to a, um, somebody's par a party one time when he was half saved, and they were all Christians. Half saved is, yeah, <laughs> you're, you think you're probably God might be real, but you're not sure yet. Or you might, you're thinking about getting the Holy Ghost, but not quite sure. You're going to know when you're all saved because <laughs> you're going to quit all your junk and really jump into that river. So anyway, um, yeah, so he wanted to know why everyone was so happy. Why are you smiling? He was, he couldn't understand it. And, and he found out later because they believed in Jesus. Isn't that cool? It's that simple. And especially now, you know what I'm talking about. You go out, look at, look at people in the eyes, they, if they will, hardly they will, and smile. Literally, I was in uh, Turkey, sitting in a restaurant just last September in Turkey, having some food, looking around, scoping out this Islamic Republic I'm sitting in, thinking, I don't know if I was really made for the Middle East. <laughs> I'm American. These people hate me. And I was just like, no, 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 don't be, a, don't be silly. I, I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm about to shine through this Istanbul city and tell you what's up. I'm about to run up there in that minaret and grab that microphone all day long. I'm about to go up there and say, hello. Istanbul, Jesus loves you. Hey. Yeah. About to get arrested, too. Uh, I don't want to go to jail. We're scared to go to jail. We're American. Look at Paul. Did you see all the stuff that guy went through? And I'm sitting there going, uh, these people are going to kill me. Anyway, I'm sitting there going through a million warfare brain cells. And I was like smiling though, because I was like, I, I love just being a missionary. Whee! And this girl just comes over to the table. She could hardly speak English. She was like Chinese or something. She goes, you smile good. You smile make me happy. You smile make me really happy. I was like, what are you saying? <laughs> Honey, buy her some coffee. He goes, I know. Cameron was like, your smile. She said, it's your smile. I was like, oh, my, my smile makes you happy. Yes, you smile. I see you walk in. You smile. Make everybody happy. Really, that happened. And I said, oh, okay, that works. That's easy. <laughs> then you can start, you know, you know why that smile? Jesus. That's how it works. Are you going to hide your light under a bushel? Well then. Sometimes my light doesn't shine so bright and I got to kick, kick start that thing. <laughs> I 
I'm not going to go into that story. <laughs> Ooh, the truth, the truth will set you free. So now mostly Cameron and I, we do a lot of visiting churches. We teach and train a musical worship, and we visit the Iranian underground church leaders and persecuted Christians who have fled. We travel to fellowships all over the world, teaching how to flow in the power of the Holy Spirit. And then we have um, just, so I'm going to tell you some testimonies. But one of the things that we do is, like I said before, we're the same. We're the same whether we have a microphone or we're walking down the street. And one of our favorite things to do in the Middle East and all other countries we go is to walk around and just bless people on the streets and especially to businesses, um, especially after COVID. So Italy, wherever we are, Switzerland, Italy, South Africa, uh, the Middle East, we just bless the businesses and bless the people. And everybody wants to be blessed. Everybody wants the benediction of God, I tell you. And then if you want to open up a conversation, they're going to be ready. They want to be blessed and they want you to bless their children. They want their marriages and their families to be blessed. And some of them will just pour their hearts out. But you got to take a risk. I know a lot of you know what I'm talking about. But it's going to get brighter. It, we're getting so brighter. So we have to do everything Gary said and just be so brave and take a risk. It gets, it gets way easier the more you just forget about yourself and think about what you're carrying. You know, isn't that awesome? So it's super simple for me. I do work on writing songs for the nations, um, and I work on different languages. I don't speak them, but I learn phonetically to sing. Uh, Kalani does this, and other, sing other people, and anybody can do that as well. You can just take a few courses and get with somebody if you're traveling to another nation and sing a little bit in their languages, and it really brings unity and draws people to Christ. So. We do that. Um, so uh, one of the biggest things about also worship winning souls or however you want to say it is the love of Christ. If you, um, are you in love with Christ is the question. Are you in love with Jesus? Do you know that? So just begin if you're not sure, because believe me, some people are not sure. Maybe they've been in the church all, your, all their lives and they're just not sure. Or they need a refreshing. So just ask the Lord, you know, I, I, wanna, I love you, but I need a new, fresh first love again or second love, third love. I don't want to be, you know, saying things that are just normal. But what's the fourth, fifth, sixth love like? You know, let's move on because it's the love of Christ that will draw people in. Because that's what we need, is we need his love. His love works better than any love. He died for that. And sometimes our love machine, our love connection, it can get a little broken or muddy, like Gary was praying our prayers today. So keep, keep that. My husband says, keep traveling in your own heart. Every morning, ask your own heart, like, how are you? Wake up today. We need to, we need to let you, we need to let Jesus shine. What, so just check in. He says, check in with your heart and then go on about your Jesus business. So ask the Lord to help you fall in love and ask the Lord every day, teach me how to love. I've been asking him that ever since I gave my heart to the Lord. Teach me how to love. And it's getting better every day. So that's us. We carry an energy that is the greatest power in the world, the love of Christ. That energy changes us, our families, our cities, our nations, and our world. And of course, we will take it outside of the church. All right. So I'm just going to give you some cool testimonies and then pray for y'all. Uh, oh, wait, let's talk about a Holy Spirit, a side note. It helps to believe in the power and gifts of Holy Spirit. Maybe some of you are new at that. That's so good. So you, you will learn about, you'll learn a lot about that here. If you're visiting, get some books or join online and, and learn about that. The gifts, the gifts 
of the Holy Spirit and um, the uh, fruit, the gifts and the fruit of the Spirit. Really need to know that. This is our engine. This is our engine and this is what we do when we talk to people and we sing and we do musical worship. We are the engine of the Holy Spirit on the earth to the lost and brokenhearted. So it, it can be very simple. It is the presence of God in our music and in our daily lives that will bring the hurting to receive. I'm telling you stuff you know, but you need to hear it again. Corporate musical worship is so fabulous. And for many of us, the musical part is the best part of church. Not particularly, but for some of us, because all of it's good. But this, this concentrated, unified sound really does draw people in like nothing else. It's so awesome. Like this morning, we're all singing, we're all singing together. So people will come, they come running in. They will. They are. So, uh, oh, I'm going to give one scripture before I tell you some testimonies. The, everybody loves the um, Paul and Silas when they're in prison. Don't you just, gosh, I love that so much. So <laughs> we sing together as the body of Christ. Perhaps we should expect an earthquake. <laughs> I mean, I want, I want an earthquake of anointing to, to bring the people into the love of Christ. So I was feeling it a little this morning. There's there, it was a rumbling. It was a rumbling. So let's just read it. I'm just going to read it. I'm reading from the Passion Translation, if that's okay with you guys. I'm just going to read this. And the title in the Passion for Acts 16, 23 through 24 is really good. Miracles can come out of painful places. There's a lot of us that we have pain in our lives. Our families are in pain. We have a lot of stuff. Miracles can come. So I'm just going to read it. After they were severely beaten. Pause. They were thrown into prison and the jailer was commanded to guard them securely. So the jailer placed them in their innermost cell of the prison and had their feet bound and chained. Paul and Silas, undaunted, prayed in the middle of the night and sang songs of praise to God while all the other prisoners listened to their worship. A great earthquake suddenly shook the foundations of prison. All at once, every prison door flung open and the chains of all the prisoners came loose. Startled, the jailer awoke, seeing every door, every cell door standing open. Assuming that all the prisoners had escaped, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself. When Paul shouted in the darkness, it was dark too. Stop, don't hurt yourself. We are still here. The jailer called for a light. The jailer <laughs> called for a light. <laughs> oh my gosh. When he saw that they were still in their cells, he rushed in, fell trembling at their feet, led Paul and Silas outside and said, what must I do to be saved? Then he led Paul and they, they, they answered, oh sorry, they answered, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and all your family. Then they prophesied the word of the Lord over him and all his family. Even though the hour was late, he washed their wounds. Then he and all his family were baptized. He took Paul and Silas into his home, set them at his table, and fed them. The jailer and his family were filled with joy in their newfound faith in God. Woo! So, when our musical worship is filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, a lost soul has no chance. Filled! Fill us, Lord. We love you, Jesus. All right, well, some testimonies now from some of the stuff, some of the music and some of the whatnot things, because testimonies are great, aren't they? So this is, a, this is one, one of my favorite ones from a young, uh, a young woman in Iran. Um, I guess I better not say her name. I don't know. 
probably not. I am a Christian and my husband is a religious Muslim. Boom. Every time I watch Persian worship music or Christian teaching, because we have satellite TV channels in the Middle East, Christian satellite TV that go 24 seven. There's three major satellites. And Cameron and I, that's what we do. We do programs mostly in Farsi for the Iranian church, but we're gonna try to move over into the Arabic. But that's what, that's what she's talking about. She's watching Christian um, satellite TV, which is leading people to the Lord in masses. Um, just, this is so good. Every time I will watch Persian worship music or Christian teaching, he would leave the house and tell me that I should never listen to these things. The first time I was listening to your song, we have this really great song, Doret Begar Dam. It's, it, mean, it's, uh, it means I want to run around you, Jesus. I want to run around you with singing. It's really cute. From Zephaniah 317. Uh, I was listening to your worship song, Doret Begar Dam. My husband was sitting next to me and he got up to leave, but then he turned around and said, wow, what a great song. That has touched my heart. Can you play that again? And he watched it four times and then he had me download it onto his phone. And he said, this music, it has touched my heart and I want you to find this music for me from now on. She said, this was really strange for him and I was overjoyed. I wanna thank you, Sister Susie. I believe this is his first step to receive Jesus Christ. Yes! All I did was take a, take, a, take a risk. I did a vision I had. It was very hard. It took me five years. I, did, I wrote some songs with my friends in half Farsi, half English. I, hired the, I raised the money. I hired the best producer. I made them sound really good. Then I made videos. Then I gave them to, for, to the satellite for free. You see? I have thousands of testimonies. It's not just me. Oh, you have the connections. You have, no. And I almost quit because it was hard. And raising money is not my forte. <laughs> But I did, and God did it. It wasn't about me. God did it. Oh, my gosh, it's so easy. We can do this. Thank you. This is from, uh, oh, we just were in Cyprus one time doing a meeting. Thank you so much for your wonderful music. Oh, no, wait, Cyprus. Oh, just wanted to say thank you. Our worship here in Cyprus has definitely gone to a new level. Uh, I'm privately singing to my husband. I'm privately singing my husband in to the kingdom of God because I did this little teaching of just sing him in. Sing him in. I sang my brother in law in and he got saved. And, he, um, he ha and then Rick Joyner prayed for him and he has massive visions now. He's he recorded all of them, like 300 visions of heaven. So, yeah, she said, I'm singing him in. So, sing your people in can do it out louder in private or in the shower or whatever. Uh, here's one. Oh, oh, this is from Iran. I, thank you for your music. I have a six-year-old son who has autism, and when he plays your music, it's healing him. <laughs> what? Here's a good one from Turkey. Cameron, we used your music videos and worship music during our conference. And we had so many people healed and someone was raised from the dead. <laughs> I, I really kind of wanted proof on that. I didn't, but I trust her. She's a really strong missionary. I can't say her name. And then she said a hundred Iranians came to Jesus during, that, during the one meeting. So and that was really cool. Oh, there is a good one from a guy in France. This is from Morningstar. When I was eight years old, my parents bought me a Morningstar CD. So I'm figuring that was about 25 years ago, maybe. I was living in a remote location of France with not so many friends, and the few CDs I had were incredibly precious to me, particularly this one. I listened to it every day and every night falling asleep. I cried and cried and cried and dreamed of my future while listening to this fresh music. So now, it saved me and it shaped my future. I am now flourishing as a worship leader. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? But you don't have to just be a worship leader. I'm just saying that shaped his destiny. 
Well, he, he didn't know he, when he was eight years old he was gonna do that, do you know what I mean? So that's cool. Um, one time we were in Holland doing some fresh worship and all these young kids came in, they weren't saved and their noses started bleeding and they all got delivered and came to the Lord. One time I was in Holland and we were in a really cool location, which was in the city with the doors open and the music was, I said, turn the music up really loud. It'll draw all those homeless people in that are walking around and all those drug addicts and let's see what happens. So we flew, pushed open the doors and we were doing this old song of mine, dance as loud as we could. And then I said, let's all go out, keep the music going. A few of us, let's run out there and dance in the street. People started coming in and getting saved. This one girl came in. She was being groomed to be a bride of Satan. She was 18 years old. I lay my hands on her and she flew backwards. And then I gave her the microphone. And I said, why don't you sing a song now? And she started singing about seeing the angels come and minister to her. And she got saved. You just gotta throw open those doors. <laughs> Throw open the doors to your heart. Oh my gosh, one of my favorite ones. We were doing a worship school. Just because you're doing a worship school, you still got to let all, whoever wants to come, come. Come on in. Come on in, people. And this was in a good location too. This girl was a, in a street gang and someone actually did bring her. And she was kind of just thinking about coming to Christ. So it wasn't a total, you know, she came in and she had a guitar and they, they were like, Susie, this girl's in a street gang. She, she doesn't even know when her birthday is. She's been homeless for so long. She doesn't know even have a birthday. And she's, <laughs> I gave her the microphone and she sang a worship song and the Holy Spirit fell. And now she has a ministry. She leads hundreds of homeless people to the Lord every day. And now she has an orphanage. I mean, come on. She, she's just came in off the streets. Any of us can do this. It just takes a little courage. The courage that the disciples had was not human. Did you know that? The Acts is more about the Holy Spirit than it is about the disciples. The courage, the boldness, it wasn't human. Came from the Holy Spirit. I have a ton more, but I guess we should just pray. Yeah, so yeah, testimonies. Worship wins souls. And we want to learn more about it. We want to learn how to hear his voice even closer, even deeper, even wider, and follow him as best we can and bring the fresh, beautiful, anointed presence and sound of the Lord into our world. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. We love you. We worship you. We thank you for this morning. Man, you just already saturated us with your presence and your love. And we know that you're healing us. We know that you're healing things that we've, some of us have been contending with for a while just praying for that healing, for that next level of faith. We, we thank you, God, that the courage and the faith and the um, boldness you want to give us, it, it is not human, and, but we can have it from you, from the power of your Holy Spirit. Lord, just open up in us this weekend more levels, more doors, more wells. It's the year of open. Not just doors. It's just a year of open, period. The year of opening. Open your people. We are the ones to bring the love of Christ into the world. It's easy and it's beautiful. Thank you, Father. And I ask that you anoint each and every person in here with courage and boldness. Courage and boldness that the disciples had even more. We're supposed to do the greater works. The greater works the greater musical worship, the greater worship lifestyle, the greater works, the beauty of the Lord shining through us into a dark and lonely world. In Jesus' name, bless you guys.